Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. Alright, so today I'm going to be painting flyaway lips and I'm going to be sipping on some passion fruit tea. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. Alright, so for my materials today, I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, burnt umber, which I'll call brown, Mars black, cobalt blue, and fire red. And of course you can switch those up too if you'd like. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'll be using for some drawing, and then I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush, I have a number 10 round synthetic brush, and I have a number three round synthetic brush. And I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. Of course, you can switch those up too if you'd like to. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same type of paint and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there for you. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting a base coat for the entire canvas. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm gonna use are brown and white. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself a medium tan color, and I'm gonna be using that as the base color for my entire canvas. So I've already pre-mixed myself a little bit so you can kind of see where I'm headed. I am going to need some of this brown for later, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of scoop some of this over here so I have it for later. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of white into my brown. I'm just looking for a nice kind of medium tan color. And I like to add my white a little bit at a time because I know that if I add too much, I can't really bring it back to, the, to being dark. So I'm gonna add my white just a little bit at a time until I get it as light as I want. And I do know that it will turn a little bit darker as it dries. So I'm gonna mentally kind of plan for that as I'm making my color. So this is looking pretty good to me. I'm gonna just kind of spin it around so it's a nice solid color. And then once I've got it all nice and spun around, I think I want just a little bit more white in here. Once I've got it nice and, and spun around, what I'm gonna do is just paint my canvas with this solid color. It doesn't have to be a perfect coat. That's looking pretty good in through there. So what I'm gonna do, just take my, my filled up brush and I'm gonna be using most likely um, throughout the whole area, a left to right type of brush stroke, but you could certainly, since we're doing a solid color, you could certainly do a crisscross or you could do a vertical or whatever type of brush stroke that you want. You could even do a circular kind of brush stroke because we're gonna be doing a second coat later to add some other information all over the canvas. So this is just really providing us with the tone of the canvas that we want to use as a background for all of the objects and information that we're gonna be putting on in a little while. And I chose to do like a tan color because I do have some lighter elements that are gonna be going onto the canvas and I wanted them to really pop out and, and be very, um, you know, be of a nice prominent focal point. So I wanted to kind of tone this canvas down so it wasn't so bright white, white, and so the white wouldn't compete with those lighter areas that I'm gonna be applying later. So I'm just covering the whole thing. We, are, we did use a lot of white in this color mixture, so you are gonna get very good coverage, which means you probably won't need to do a second coat 
for this particular step. I'm not going to, I'm just doing this one layer. And if you do have a little bit of streaking or areas that don't look like they're fully covered all the way, don't worry about that because again, we're gonna be doing a lot more to the entire canvas. So those type of areas will be covered by the time that we are done. And then we're going to be utilizing our piece of chalk for the next step. So once you've got this done, as you can see, I'm just going back and forth to make sure that I have all of my thick spots kind of painted out and I've got a nice even coverage throughout the whole thing. And then I will put this large brush away, take out my piece of chalk and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be drawing an outline of our lips and our lipstick. So I'm gonna be using my chalk. I'm gonna guide you through a series of dots. We're gonna connect the dots and hopefully by the time we're done, we'll have some nice basic shapes that we'll be able to color in in a future step. So how I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna start with the lips first and I'm gonna draw the um, draw a line between the top lip and the bottom lip first. So I'm gonna, on the left-hand side of my canvas, I'm gonna find about the halfway point, maybe a, if this is about halfway, I might be a little bit lower than that, and about an inch in towards, um, about an inch in the canvas. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be at the same height, and I'm gonna come over from the right-hand side about a quarter of the way, so about five inches. And to find where that, you could always kind of just go in the center of your canvas and then about halfway between here and the edge will give you that quarter-way mark. And then I'm gonna connect these two. I'm not concerned about a really straight line I'm, because it's lips so that it doesn't have to be perfectly straight. If you have a little bit of a wobble in it, that's okay. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna eyeball about halfway between here and here, so somewhere in here, and I'm gonna go up about three inches, and then I'm gonna go down about three and a half inches. So I want this bottom section to be a little bit wider than the top section. Then I'm gonna connect here to here and here to here. This will be the top part of the lip, so I'm gonna give it a little bit of a bump in through here and then just connect it to the edge and then do the same thing over on this side, a little bit of a bump, connect it down here. And then I'm gonna connect here to here, making sure I hit this mark with a big oval type of a line. So you can start in one corner and just kind of meet in through here and then come straight through and then just kind of curve it back up in through here. And of course you can adjust that as much as you want. I'm going to put my lipstick a little bit to the left of the center of my mouth. So if this is about center, I'm gonna go maybe I would say an inch or two to the left, if this is my middle of my lip, or you know, between the two of them, my line, I'm gonna come down from here about halfway between there and the bottom of my um, lip, or maybe about an inch or so, so somewhere like that. This is gonna be the top of the lipstick and it's gonna come down like this. So I'm gonna bring this down till it's gonna be maybe about two and a half inches wide and I'm gonna stop about an inch and a half um, below or before the bottom of my canvas. So I'm gonna bring this kind of at a little bit of a point, a rounded kind of point at the top and then curve it and then come straight down. So we've got our little rounded point, curve it just a little bit and come down and just kind of go straight down until I'm about an inch and a half away from the bottom of my canvas. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect these two markers but I'm gonna overhang it just a little bit. So I'm gonna take my chalk I'm gonna connect these two. You can do it with a little bit of an arcing motion too, but if you don't get the arcing motion, don't worry about it. You can do it straight and then we can make it look like it's arced during the painting process. And then I'm just gonna take this line and bring it all the way down to the bottom of my canvas. Just bring a straight vertical line down and I'm gonna put a little backside to the lipstick case over there. So I just took it from this corner and gave myself a little bit of a curved line towards the back of the lipstick. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take either my small or my medium brush, add a tiny bit of water to it, and erase this center line in through here, just so I don't get confused during the painting process. So if you did it with pencil, just erase it with an eraser. If you did it with chalk, you can do it with water. You can erase it with water. And then we're gonna use our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this drawn out, you can put your chalk away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be doing the base coat for our lips and our lipstick. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are blue, white, red, black, brown, 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 and black. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be doing 
my, most of the lips with a light blue color that we'll be mixing with blue and white. I'm going to do a portion of the lips with a reddish color and then lipstick will be the light blue and then this is going to be black. So what I'm going to first do is I'm going to do my um, natural lip color base which is going to be um, this left hand section of the lip. It's going to during our painting process, this section of the natural color will kind of morph into where we're going to have the lipstick on the lips. So when I do this, I'm going to leave um, my edges really soft so they'll blend in with our blue as we go through the painting process. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to be using red and brown on my brush at the same time. I'm not going to pre-mix the color because I want to have a lot of different tones within this natural um, section of the lips. What I'm going to first do is I'm going to kind of section off in a loose way where I want it to go. It's going to be down in this bottom left hand section and it's going to come, I would, I'm going to come down a little bit from the lipstick in through here and then just give myself a long kind of curvy line going into the, the center of the of the lips and just really kind of brushing this nice and loosely in between the two lips and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that same thing on this entire center section of the lips so I have a really nice kind of light easy transition as it's going to go into the um, blue lipstick that we're going to be doing in a minute so really just kind of lightly dusting this on and then this entire section in through here I'm just going to kind of paint it with a a circular type of motion so this way I'm going to get these different tonal values because I have the red and the brown on my brush so I'm just kind of rubbing it in here and it doesn't have to be perfectly executed this is just going to act as um, the base coat for our for our lips so you can certainly have fun with it I'm going to do this edge in through here kind of clean I don't necessarily need this to be um, a super soft line so I'm going to slow down and get that to be a little bit on the cleaner side where it has a more of a crisp edge to it and then I'm just going to kind of rub this in and then once I get this done I'm going to wash and dry my brush and prepare my light blue color for the um, for the other areas just kind of making sure this edge is nice and soft as it's gonna meet that blue area and if you don't get your edges as soft as mine don't worry about it we'll have plenty of opportunity to get them blend to blend in so I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and then I'm gonna prepare a light blue color so how I'm gonna get to that I've already pre-mixed it so you can see where I'm headed I just took some of my blue and added white paint to it so I'm going for like a really light sky blue type of a color. You might want yours to be different. Maybe you want to go for like a purple color or a lavender color, or maybe you want yours to be more white than mine. Whatever is speaking to you is totally fine. I thought it'd be neat to be light blue like the sky because we're having birds coming out of our lipstick, but you could certainly do whatever you'd like. So once you've got it in the color that is speaking to you, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna to take this color and I'm going to paint the entire upper lip with it and again I'm going to give myself kind of clean edges where it meets the exterior um, of my chalk so I'm going to slow down when I'm in that area you may not get a perfect coverage on this um, on on this go around so if you can still see some of <clears throat> excuse me some of your um, tan underneath it that's okay because we're gonna like I said we've got much more steps to go and that tan is intended to kind of be the base coat and and give this blue a nice kind of neutral tone to it so I'm okay if I can still see some of that blue um, underneath it and then once I get to where I'm gonna meet the red that's where I'm gonna kind of rub it in a little bit more so I have a, a softer transition as it is meeting that red area. So I'm just kind of using the side of my brush, giving myself a, a softer edge where it's meeting that blue and again, I mean where it's meeting the red and again I don't need a perfect coverage. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same section in through here. So with this section I'm going to 
keep this a little bit of separating point between my lip and my lipstick. So as, um, as I progress through this, I don't get those two areas confused. We will, um, in a little while, we'll put some definition on the edges of them. But until we get to that point, I'm going to leave myself a little visual separation point between the two. So I'm going to go right up to my chalk mark and just leave a little bit of that chalk mark visible so I as the painter don't get confused as I'm going through the process. And then as I get up towards that um, the red color that's where I'm going to start to get it to blend in a little bit with the red. Again doesn't have to blend a hundred percent. We're just going for something that's not a super clean line as it's um, as the two colors are kind of merging together. And then I'm going to go ahead with this light blue and color in my lipstick portion in through here. So this is, can just be just a nice solid color with clean edges to it. So I'm going to bring it to my uh, chalk, but again, leaving that little bit of a visible place where it's meeting the lips so I don't lose that thought process. And then just bringing it all the way down to the, um, well, gosh, I'm not a big lipstick person. The lipstick applicator holder thing. <laughs> this part down here. I'm not sure what the technical term for that is, but we'll just call it the, I don't know, the lipstick container. There you go, the lipstick container. Once we get down, I'm just bringing my blue right down to there, leaving it nice and clean around the edges. So if you're having difficulty getting clean edges, my tip is to just use a little bit more paint on your brush. So. It has um, the option to stay nice and smooth on the edges. If you're finding that your paint is skipping a little bit or it's drying on you, it might be just because you need more fluidity, which could come with more paint or with a um, you know, li little liquid medium or something in it. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush so I can get this section down here. I'm just gonna paint this bottom section with black paint. So I washed and dried my brush and I'm just picking up some black paint. Nothing fancy on this section, just you wanna color it in all the way to the lipstick. I'm gonna go nice and slow as I'm meeting the lipstick so I can get that line to be fully executed right next to that blue. And then I'm gonna slow down when I get these two little corners. If you need to, you can certainly use a smaller brush to get these little tiny corners in through here wherever your comfort zone is, feel free to do that. And if for some reason you leave a little bit of your chalk showing, um, you can certainly just wait for your black paint to dry and then you could erase those little um, chalk marks with just some water like we did earlier during the drawing process. And I'm just gonna slow down here so I can get this little corner in through here. Sometimes these little tiny areas are the most difficult to do because you just gotta slow down a little bit and I tend to paint on the faster side. <laughs> so what we're gonna be doing for the next step, we are gonna be using our um, large brush. So you can, we're gonna use our large brush. No, let's use our, let's use our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our lips. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm gonna be using are red, black, brown, blue, or my light blue, and some white. And really what I'm doing is just looking to add some form to these lips. So I want them to be nice and dark in through here, maybe a little bit of a shadow down at the bottom, and then I want them to be kind of poofy or, you know, pop out a little bit more up in this vicinity and in the middle of the lips. So, so we can make them look kind of natural. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the shadowy areas, which is gonna be in between the two lips in through here and then down at the bottom and then we'll work our way to the light. Now, all the while I'm also thinking I kinda of want this to look like the sky too. So the blue, when I get to the blue parts, I'll probably be emulating like clouds or something like that up at the top with some nice fun circular motions. So think of this as just a fun impressionistic surreal type of painting and just have fun through the process. So I'm going to start in my shadows. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put red plus a tiny bit of black paint on my brush. 
so I can get a real nice kind of dark area in through this center area in through here. And I don't need a ton of paint. So what I'm gonna do, once I get it on there, I'm just gonna kind of wipe my brush off on my paper towel and then just rub it out a little bit. You could add a tiny bit of water onto your brush to get it to um, kind of spread out a little bit further. I'm even gonna kind of bring it up a little bit into this, um, the upper lip, lip a little bit. And because I have the red and black, it'll probably turn into a little bit of a light kind of purpley type of color. And then I'm just gonna kind of rub this up so it it looks like it's kind of shadowed as it's coming out of the inside of the lip and then it and and it gets um brighter as it's going towards the top i just reloaded with a little bit more of the black and the red so i can get this center line to just really um kind of have a nice transition as it goes out adding just a teeny bit more black onto my brush so i can make sure the crease in through here is nice and visible and then of course it doesn't have to be again a straight line so if you feel that you want it to kind of bend and morph a little bit that's totally fine and i'm just trying really hard to not give it a solid line so now that i've got that done i'm going to um get a just kind of utilize that remnants on my brush to get a little bit of darkness down at the bottom of this lip so i still just have a tiny bit of the black and the um, red on my brush with a little bit of water to get a little bit of a shadow happening at the bottom of the lip and again the red in there is just going to kind of make it like a purpley type of um, color to make it give a, a really nice um, natural type of shadowing at the bottom of that lip and we're, if you go outside your lip don't worry we're doing a big old shadow on the um, surface underneath the lips later I'm going to now add a touch of brown and a little bit of black on my brush because I want a little bit of a shadow from the lipstick onto the lips. So I added a touch of black and brown on my brush so I can get a little bit, maybe a little bit more black here so I can get a little bit of a shadow along the side here. And if you find as you're going through this shadow making process that um, that your brush is too big, you can always switch to the smaller brush if you want if while you're getting into these smaller areas. So wherever your comfort zone is with the size of the brush, don't feel that you have to muscle through with whatever size I'm using. It's more about what your, what you, your comfort level is um, and what your, um, because you're probably, you know, you could be using different brushes than I am using. So wherever your comfort zone in it is, is totally fine. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to start working on my lighter areas. So I want a light area on this, uh, where the bottom lip kind of pops out to us, but I need to kind of treat it a little bit with different colors because I want this to be my redder area and this to be my bluer area. So I'm going to start with my redder area first. So what I'm going to first do is I'm going to make myself a lighter version of red. So I'm going to take just a tiny bit of white paint and mix it in with some of my red. I don't want it to go super duper pink on me, but I definitely want a lighter version. So that's going to be a nice light version that will help me to start the, um, the full part of the lip from, from per uh, started to protrude out. So just a little bit of this lighter red type of color. And again, don't worry if you bump into your lipstick or bump into any other area. That is totally fine. We'll be able to correct that in a minute. I'm doing kind of a curved type of line in through here. And then as I get towards this center area, I'll pull it kind of down. And then I'll do maybe some little dots to indicate the wrinkles and the, and the texture in, in the lips. And then once I've got that on, I don't overdo it just a little bit here and there. Maybe a little bit of this lightness at the, at the bottom edge of the lip just to give it that little bit of, you know, a skin type of look to it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a touch of white paint to my brush and give myself a little bit more lightness in some of these, um, in this area that pops out the most. I put a couple of little spots of white. I'm going to wipe my brush off just to get this to blend in just a little bit more in through here. And again, I'm thinking just kind of ripples on the lip 
You can certainly um, make yours lighter or darker than mine, whatever works for you. I'm going to pick up a touch more red too, so I can get that to look a little bit more on the reddish side, a little bit more natural. And that's, again, again, going to be kind of a personal preference on your part, how red you want your, your lips to go. I'll tackle the light blue side in a minute, but I'm going to just pull a little bit of this reddish color into and cross over this blue a little bit just so when I um, go to do that it'll it'll make sense and then I think I'm gonna put maybe a little bit of brown over here in this corner here just so it um, kind of works its way out and makes it look a little bit more natural to me and then maybe a little bit of white on my brush to just get these little corners of the lip to look like it's morphing into the skin area so something like that and these are again just little um, nuances that will make it look a little bit more natural if you can add a little bit more of that texture to it I just picked up a little bit of my light red plus white just to get this to be a little bit more bold and pop out a little bit more so that's looking pretty good to me and of course you could certainly fiddle with that that's probably the toughest part of the of the whole lip area that we're going to be doing and now I'm going to wash and dry my brush so I can get into this blue area without um, having too much red on my brush so I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to go into this with my um, I'm going to start with white on my brush so I'm going to use white as my highlight so I'm going to kind of follow the curves that I had in the red area and start to do it on the right hand side so this is going to give me that um that appearance of the lip kind of popping out now i'm going to without washing my brush i'm picking up some of my light blue color and then i'm going to just kind of get this all to to blend in in through here so i'm not really doing a whole heck of a lot just really want to give the appearance of these two kind of morphing into each other and getting it to look like it's got a little bit of um uh, a subtle kind of introduction into it. I just added a little bit more of my original blue, uh, my sky blue onto here just to get these to make sure that they blend well together. And of course you can certainly fiddle with that all you want. And then I'm gonna go move up to the top. I put just a little bit of white on my brush without washing it. And I'm gonna, um, my highlights are gonna be kind of up at the top and then in through this center area. So I just have white on my brush and I'm gonna be rubbing it in kind of like a circular type of motion. So what will happen is it's going to be brighter in the areas where I put it first and then it will blend out into the rest of the, it'll fade out into the rest of the blue. So something like this will totally work for me. And if you go too much, if you, you know, put too much white on and, and weren't able to blend it in time, just bring back some of that original sky blue that you had in there and just keep fiddling with it. it you don't have to just go with the, the single layer. I just actually picked up a little bit more of the sky blue so I can get these two areas to blend in nicely with each other. And if you liked the red tones coming up into it, you can certainly add more of those. Just feel free to fiddle with it until it's visually appealing to you. And then we are going to be switching to our small brush for the next step. So once you've got your lips done, you can put your medium brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be finishing our lipstick. I'm going to use my small brush. The colors that I'm going to be using are black, white, brown, sky blue, and cobalt blue. And what I'm really going to do is I'm just going to give these a little bit of shape and contour and maybe a little bit of shine and... Um, and then we'll be done with them. So how I'm going to do this, I'm going to do my lipstick portion first. I'm going to put a little bit of shadow down on the edges of it so it makes it look like it's round. And then we'll put a little bit of a highlight on the top. And then for our um, container part, we'll do the same thing. We'll put a little bit of highlight um, in the middle so that'll make it look like it's round. And then we'll put a little highlight on the top and it'll be easy. So I'm going to start with some cobalt blue on my brush for this shadowy area on the left hand side of my lipstick. So I put a little bit of uh, cobalt blue on my brush. I'm coming down this left hand side with just kind of a nice line. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a touch of brown and my sky blue 
to get this to blend in a little bit. So I'm just, while it's kind of still a little wet, I've got the brown and sky blue on my dirty brush. I didn't wash my brush, so all of these colors are gonna just start to work together. And I'm just kind of rubbing it in over here on the left-hand side. Then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel, and I'm gonna pick up some of my sky blue. I call it sky boot blue, but I guess it's kind of lipstick blue too. <laughs> and then just get this to blend in a little bit more. So you could have your shadow as light or as dark as you want it. I'm just getting some of the remnants of that color off of my brush as I'm going through this process and it's making it blend nice. While I've got a little bit of that remnant still on my brush because I didn't wash my brush, I just wiped it off on my paper towel, I'm gonna rub that in over here on the right side. So I'm not making this side as light as this, as the left side. And then I'm picking up more of my sky blue to make sure that this center area really blends in well with those shadows that I just placed in there. So if you, you know, if you run out of your blue, you can make more like I'm doing on the fly right now. <laughs> um, and then I'm just gonna make sure again that these just blend in nicely together. So I'm continuing to kind of overlap the sections so they work well. And then I'm gonna bring that, um, make sure that I have a good coverage on the entire lipstick. So I'm just bringing this all the way up to the top just making a little bit more blue here. There we go, bringing this all the way up to the top to make sure that I have a good coverage. And this is where any of those little edges that you might have overlapped, or if you still had some of your chalk showing, you can certainly take care of that now. So I'm just bringing that right to the edge. This is my um, sky blue. It looks a little bit lighter when it's wet. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up some white paint in order to get some beautiful shiny kind of highlights down the center of this. So what I'm gonna just wipe it off on my paper towel. I'm gonna pick up white paint and I'm gonna give myself a real bright highlight up at the top. And if your light blue is still wet, that's great. It'll just make it look like it's all nice and blending in together. I'm just gonna kind of pull this down on this left-hand side in a nice streaky fashion. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a curve so that way it um, tells the viewer that this in fact is a rounded type of object. Picking up a little bit more white paint right now to do the same thing in through here, having my, my light area up at the top. And then I'm just gonna kind of pull it down, giving my, my highlight coming down the lipstick in through here. Oops, I went into that lip a little bit, there we go. And I'm just gonna kind of get it to blend down into that lighter blue area, kind of giving it a nice um, continual streak down in through there. I went into my lipstick case, that's okay, we'll take care of that when I paint the lipstick case. And then I'm gonna do one down this right hand side. So again, still just white paint on my brush and gonna do a little bit of a highlight over here on the right hand side and just making sure it's a nice kind of fluid type of line and then just kind of pull it down in through here. And of course, if you did something that wasn't the way that you had anticipated, just come back with that original blue and you can certainly, um, the light blue, and you can certainly tweak it all you want. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit the, um, the lipstick case itself. So wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna put um, black and white on my brush. So a little bit of black and just a tiny touch of white. You don't need much paint at all on your brush. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be putting a little bit of a highlight in the center area in through here. So I know that I want my object to be, look like it's kind of curved. So if you want to use a curved type of brush stroke to tell that story, that's totally fine. But what you'll wanna do is just kind of bring it out towards those sides so it almost kind of fades out into the, um, the darkness of the sides of the, um, of the little container. And then once I've got that on there, I'm gonna put a little bit of white paint on my brush. I'm gonna give myself this little bit of a highlight at the edge of my lipstick case. I'm gonna put it a little bit away from the actual lipstick itself so it makes it look a little bit more three-dimensional. So I have white paint on my brush and I'm just gonna bring this over in this area, staying a little bit away from my 
lipstick itself and then just bring this little edge over in through here. And then if I had any trouble spots like this little stripe here, I can just put a little bit more black paint on my brush and take care of that. And if you have any other little spots that you wanna take care of, feel free to do so. We're gonna be utilizing our large brush for the next step. So you can put your small brush away, take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are going to finish our background. So I'm gonna use my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are black, brown, my tan, white, and my light blue color. So what I'm in essence gonna do is I'm going to add some atmospheric dimension to this painting. I'm going to put a shadow underneath the lips, a highlight above it so they kind of pop out and look a little bit more three-dimensional. And then I'm gonna add some smoky cloudiness around the rest of the painting to, I don't know, speak to the cool color that's in the lips and the birds that are gonna be flying around. So we'll go for some atmospheric dimension. So I'm gonna be using my large brush. Um, I'm gonna start with my shadowy area, which is gonna be underneath here. When I'm doing my shadow areas, I do not need a lot of paint on my brush. Frankly, I don't need a lot of paint on my brush the whole time because we already have a nice base, but especially when I'm in the shadowy areas. So I'm gonna put a tiny bit of black and a tiny bit of brown on my brush. So just a teeny tiny bit on the edge of my brush. I'm gonna start right underneath here. So this is gonna be my darkest of my dark area. I'm gonna just kind of scoop my brush right up in, into that little crevice. And again, if you bump into you know, your lipstick or your lips more than you had anticipated, it's okay. You can always go back and make corrections to it. That's a beautiful part about acrylic paint is let it dry and just paint over it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of work this out into the atmosphere, but I need it to look like it is um, transcending over onto this side too. So while I've got that darkness on my brush, I'm gonna just kind of scoot it into this little corner in through here, kind of bring it down almost as much as I brought it down on that side, and then just kind of rub it in underneath that lip so that lip ends up kind of popping out a little bit. And at this point, if you feel like you have a lot of paint on your brush, you can certainly wipe it off on your paper towel. Um, but I'm just gonna kind of get mine to rub into the background area. So I'm just kind of scrubbing it into the canvas. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna pick up brown plus my tan color. So just making sure I've got this kind of as much um, scrubbed in and, and blended out as I, as I feel is good. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm picking up without washing my brush, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my brown and a little bit of my tan color. So this is gonna help me to just kind of blend this out and get it to work its way into that background color. So I'm gonna sometimes overlap that shadow a little bit. And again, hardly any paint on my brush. The reason I don't use a lot of paint in a step like this is so I can control the quantity and control what's happening on my canvas. And again, I know that we've got a pretty neat or a conducive color for our background. So if something goes awry, uh, you know, awry, I can always just pick up some of that background. So right now I'm gonna, con I'm not picking up any more brown. I'm gonna pick up this background color to just get these, these um, areas to really talk nicely together and make sure that they're blended well before I start adding my really light colors, which is gonna be um, the sky blue and some some white and stuff. So this is just kind of getting this on in through here. I might actually with this um, with this remnants on my brush, I might put this little bits of darkness elsewhere. So I might put a little bit up in through here. So I have the remnants of the um, of the brown and the and the background tan on my brush. I think I'm going to put a little bit up, um, especially on this side, just so it maybe gives a little bit more um, of the, the lips popping out a bit, so just a little bit in through there. And you can ha fiddle with this and have fun with how dark or light that you want. I'm just putting a tiny bit more brown on my brush, maybe just bringing this a, a little bit darker in through here. And again, I'm just kind of 
controlling it until I feel I'm ready to um, add those lighter areas on because once I start adding a lightness on my brush, I probably won't come back to these darker areas. Um, maybe just a little bit for overlapping purposes, but as far as the, the main color themselves. So that's looking pretty good to me. I think I've got enough darkness in there that I want. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start picking up my tan plus um, a little bit of blue. So tan plus my sky blue. So this way I'm going to get some, some lighter complementary areas with the blue on there that are going to work well with the, um, with the lips themselves. So I did a little bit in the corner. I think I'm going to do a little bit coming up in through here. And again, if you feel like you do anything that's too much, feel free to put, you know, bring back some of that original tan, which I, I'm, I'm going to be doing with some lighter colors in a minute, but right now I'm just kind of getting some areas of this tan or the blue on here that is going to work well with the, um, with the whole painting itself. I think and that's pretty good. Maybe a little bit more blue down in through here. And now that I've got that on there, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start picking up my tan plus white. So without washing my brush, I'm picking up tan plus white. So there might be some little remnants of the um, blue still left on my brush. And now I'm really just going to kind of have fun with the whole thing. I'm going to put some highlights above the lips in a, in a minute, some strategic highlights. But right now, just kind of working uh, maybe the remnants of this blue off of my brush with a little bit of the white and the tan so we can just get everything to kind of talk well together. I'm going to now pick up some more tan and the white. I'm going to put some extra lightness up in through here and maybe a little bit above these lips to get them to pop out just a little bit more. So just making sure I have not too much paint on my brush, a little bit of the lightness in through here. And then I will start to add some of my um, some more of the tan on my brush. I'm picking up more tan and really I'm, I'm looking to kind of do a second coat over the whole painting but I did strategically put some shadows and some highlights to make the the lips kind of look like they pop out a little bit more so the highlights above it are almost meant to imply that that's the skin popping out a little bit and same thing underneath the lips meant to kind of look like that's the the skin kind of receding a little bit but if you don't get that at, you know that Kind of appearance that's okay we're just we're just going for a fun kind of surreal t style painting anyway so if it doesn't turn out um, with a realistic element to it that's it's quite all right it's all about having fun and enjoying the process and then i'm just going to kind of make sure that i've got everywhere painting in as much as i want to maybe we got a little bit more lightness down here so right now i'm just kind of alternating between my tan and my white on my brush so this way I can get the light areas to show up as much as I want and the tan areas to make sure that it blends in as much as I want it to. And you can continue, you can do as many layers on this step as you want to. So as you're going through this process, do it a little bit and then let it dry and then come back. And if you, if there's something that you want to add to it or subtract from it, it's, it's up to you. This is your paint and you get to make it look however you want it to look. And then once you've got this done, we are going to be utilizing our small brush for the next step. So you can just put this large brush away, take out your small brush, fiddle with this as much as you want to. I might fiddle with mine a couple minutes more, but when you're done, we're going to use that um, small brush for the next step so you can just get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint ourselves some birds. I'm gonna be using my small brush and I'm just gonna be using black paint. I'm just gonna be doing some nice simple silhouettes of the birds and you can certainly choose to use other colors if you'd like to, but I'm gonna just use some black paint. So what I'm gonna first do is I'm going to thin out my black paint so it's like an ink consistency. So I take my small brush and I'm just adding little droplets of water to it. I want it to be pretty thin and the reason I want that is because I want some nice clean lines and I want to be able to control the pointiness of my brush. If you make it too translucent, that's okay. You can always do a second layer, um, but it'll be easier for you to paint if it's nice and thin like an inconsistency. And then an another tip is to take your brush and kind of spin it on the side of your palette. 
that will make within the paint that'll make it nice and pointy and my next tip for making nice skinny lines is don't push hard <laughs> so when you're painting these little lines just try not to push hard into the canvas if you have to you can even use like your hand as a brace which will prevent you you know rest it on the canvas so that way you won't push too hard into the canvas so you could also use a pencil and draw them out in advance but i'm just going to kind of free form them um, I'm going to have them as if they're being painted onto the lip from the lipstick and then they're going to fly out of the off of the lips and out of the mouth and into the atmosphere. So I'm going to start in through here. I'm going to have a couple of um, pretty good sized ones. I'm going to start with the line, uh, a marker for the body, and then I'll put the wings on. And I'm going to have them in different directions. So I'm going to start with this one. Maybe this one's going to be flying off in that direction. So there's my body. I'll put a little bit of a wing in through here and in through here. You can do lots of detail if you want, like you can put a teeny little beak if you wanted to, splay out the tail if you wanted to, but when you're doing these kind of silhouette type of birds, you don't really need a ton of detail on them, so if you can get a little bit, great. If not, that's okay too. I'll do another one in through here. So there's gonna be my body. I'll have my wing kind of going up like this and like this. And if you want, you can add your little tail in through there, and maybe you have some longer wings. And what I like to do when I'm doing these, these silhouette type of birds is just get them in a whole bunch of different positions. When I go to do, and different sizes, when I go to do, um, the, when I want to fill in the space, I'll do a lot of smaller ones too, and you'll see, um, you'll st see that come to, come to fruition in a little bit. So there's my body on this one. Maybe this wing is going to be up in this direction and maybe we'll have another one up in through here. So I've got these in different sizes. Maybe that's going to be that head for that body. That's a pretty long neck. So we'll just bring those wings <laughs> up a little bit and I'll just kind of bring that tail out a little bit. And then um, I think I'm going to have a little one maybe in through here. So there's my body. I'll have my my wings, something like that. And you'll find your groove. So, you know, when you get to the smaller ones, you may not need to do as much detail. Obviously, this one I'm going to have coming in a different direction. So maybe that's going to be like that and like that. So that's going to be the majority of the bigger ones. Maybe I'll have a couple of little smaller ones. So the smaller ones can be, you know, just the illusion of birds. So you can have like an X, you can have like a little tiny one in through there, you can have them next to each other. So you can have just little kind of d dots and stuff that look like they're really far off in the distance. So given the illusion of having a lot of birds, sometimes you can just make little marks and that's gonna, that'll do the trick. So in through here, I'm gonna want a couple that kind of look like they're flying out of the mouth. So maybe we'll just have a couple of little squiggle lines coming in through here. Maybe we'll have one like that. Maybe I'll have um, my body in through here and we'll have a couple of big wings coming out like this, like it's kind of flying right out of the body or right out of the mouth in through here. Maybe I'm going to um, kind of put a couple coming out in this direction too, kind of um, out the lip going maybe in a different direction. So there's my body. Maybe I'll have a wing coming out this way and a wing coming out that way. I don't think I need to do anything more to that one. Maybe a little one is kind of sneaking out the lips from in through here and just have fun with it. There's no rules here. We just have fun as much as we want. Maybe that's as far as you want to take it. I'm going to have a couple more on this lip. I would say, um, let's see, maybe, maybe a little bit in through here. So there's my body. I'll have a little wing in through there and a little wing in through here. We'll do one over here, my body. So that's kind of my my MO is I'm, I kind of think of where I want the direction of that body, which you might not always see, but think of the direction of the body and then kind of build those wings off of it. So as I come make my way out of the mouth, I'll probably come back and put a couple on the lipstick on and on the left side of the lip, but I'm gonna, while I'm in this trajectory, gonna finish them coming out of the mouth. So I'm gonna put a few kind of bigger ones. I'll put one in through here. There's my little head, my little tail. I'm gonna have 
a wing here, make sure I have a nice point, and up in through here. Um, maybe he looks like he's gonna go in that direction. I'll have a big one over in through here. So again, I've got my body, I've got my little head, and then I've got some big wings. So this one is really pretty big. So because it is on the larger side, I think I'm gonna want a little bit of wing detail. So as you get into the to the bigger ones, if you do, or if you do any bigger ones, if you want there to look like there is um, feathers or you know more detail on these wings, what I can, what I will typically do is just kind of bring down with my brush these little ruffled kind of edges to to the wings. You can really make them emulate any style of bird that you want. Maybe all of your birds look like they're from different kinds of flocks of birds. <laughs> Maybe they all look like they're from the same. So it's gonna be kind of a fun personal um, preference on your part as to how extensive you want your, your birds to have details to them. So again, here's, here's my body. I think I'm gonna have this one maybe I don't even see the head of this. Maybe it's just flying off in the other direction. It's going to have some big wings kind of going in this direction and then in this direction. And then, of course, this one is really big, so I'm going to definitely put some some wings on it. I'm going to just kind of make this a rounder head like he's like he's going off into into the wild blue yonder and then just give myself some little edges to those feathers, to the wing, the feathers on the wings. And of course, you know, mine might not be anatomically correct. I'm just really enjoying the process and just having fun with how this, you know, turns out. I think I want a little longer tail on that one. Yeah, that looks, that looks pretty good. And then um, I'm gonna have maybe a nice big one up in this corner, but maybe this one's going in the other direction. And maybe this one's got some thinner wings, something like that, and like that, and then maybe we'll put a little bit of a head on this one. Maybe this one's like a like a goose or something, or a crane or something. You can, again, you can have them looking whatever, whatever way you want, and just, you know, build it until it's visually appealing to you. If you think that they need to have those edges to the wings so they all look you know, like they belong to the same flock, feel free to do so. I think I'm gonna have a nice big one in through here. I'll fill in my um, my areas with a bunch of little ones too, but I just wanna kinda get these big ones in, in motion and in place, so then that'll tell me how much um, more I need to do, because I might not need to do that much more at all. It might fill itself in nicely, and I might not feel the need to do too much more. So I'm going to get some of these big ones in place and then assess my, my situation and go from there. I think I'm, I'm going to have my last maybe big one kind of coming up and through here. That's going to be the body. That's going to be, well, that's a different size wing than I had anticipated. We'll, we'll Fill that one in, there we go. And then this one's maybe coming off to the side. I think I'm gonna make this a little bit wider so the head works like that. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. And now I'm gonna just kind of fill in like a whole bunch of little tiny ones so it looks like I've got um, some good, um, like a full flock in here. So I'm just gonna really do a whole bunch of little tiny marks, maybe little itty bitty X's and check marks and just something that's going to really um, sell the story that these birds are in fact all together and just, you know, enjoying their day. My brush feels a little overloaded right now. Like I feel like I'm not getting my skinny lines. So I'm actually going to wash and dry my brush to take some of that black paint out of the bristles. So if your brush feels overloaded, what happens is your paint will is getting trapped in the bristles. So I'm just washing and drying and starting back from scratch because my brush was not getting pointy enough for me. So that's that's a little t tip to um, to help you through these little tiny um, mark making type of steps. And then I'm just going to kind of go through this and finish all these little tiny ones that I want. And again, just kind of little mark making, making some bigger, some smaller. Maybe we've got a couple behind this one that are just kind of 
um, following the leader, following the big one. Maybe we've got a couple down in through here. And again, yours don't have to be exactly in the same position as mine are. You might find that you want yours to be totally different. You might find that you want yours to have more information or less information and wherever your comfort zone is feel free to just explore it i'm going to do a whole bunch of little ones in through here and if you you know come to a point where you you know you did something and and it wasn't at all what you expected feel free to just let it dry and paint it over with that background color and i think i'm going to put one down in through here so something like this and then i'm going to put a couple um on that lipstick down in through here as well as up in this top left hand corner of my lips so i'm just reloading my brush making sure that it is the way that i want it to be and then i think i'm going to have maybe one in through here so my body and then my wings just a little little head in through there maybe a little tiny one in through here We've got one over here, my body, my little wings. And it, you know, if your brush isn't working for you, you can always just switch to a smaller brush that, you know, sometimes we think that we're working with the brush that's gonna be very conducive to what the step that we're doing and then it doesn't work out the way that we want. So you could certainly switch your brush. I'm gonna do just maybe a couple of tiny ones up in through here. And then once I've got them on, I will probably step back and see if I want to add any or subtract any. And once I've got them as in, in their final resting place, what I'll do, I am going to be utilizing the same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna be signing mine with my small brush and black paint. I think I'm going bottom right on this one. Maybe it'll look like a little birdie or something down into here. I sign mine with my initials. You can certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol. Whatever you'd like for your identifying mark to be is totally fine. And that is going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a very cool, surreal painting. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.